Yo, what is up guys? Chillfeed here and holy Jesus Gearbox. The work you've been doing lately with all of those buffs is simply amazing. This is exactly what we need in my opinion. Taking care of the weaker legendary weapons nobody was using and actually making them more than just usable brings so much variety to this game. And so, just like last week, I'm going to test all of them and give my first impression so you guys know what's worth farming for. This time around we have 10 weapons to go over so no more wasting time but definitely let me know down in the comment section right now what weapons Gearbox should buff next in your opinion. Let's get started. And of course just as I was finishing my video of the top 5 legendary assault rifles, one of my favorite assault rifles that almost made the list and actually made one of my underrated legendary weapons list from a few months ago received yet another buff and is absolutely amazing now. I'm of course talking about the Vlad of Assault Rifle slash shotgun called Phaser, which received another damage buff for both of its firing modes, increased the reload time or rather the rate at which the underbarrel shotgun refills ammo and also increased the amount of shotgun projectiles you shoot from 6 to 8. But honestly, as good as the shotgun buff sounds, I would suggest sticking to the normal firing mode for crazy elemental DPS, a fast fire rate and a big magazine to chew through. It's now easily one of the best assault rifles in the game, so definitely try to get it with the highest chance to drop from Atomic in the Tazendir runes. Next up is a much needed buff for three, in my opinion, amazingly designed sniper rifles and to be honest sniper rifles in general needed to get some love in terms of damage and that's exactly what some of them got with these hotfixes. Let's start talking about the Firestorm first and just take a look at its awesome looking ability to spawn three fireballs that rise up and fall back down after a short delay for each shot you fire and even though the fireballs themselves still don't deal too much damage to your enemies, it is great for incendiary damage in a larger area and therefore some crowd control or simply just there to finish off your enemies if they got a little bit of health left while you have to reload or something. The best thing about the sniper rifle buff is that it now makes up for a small magazine and charge up time in terms of projectile damage so it's just like a sniper rifle is supposed to be. And speaking of projectile damage, we have another incendiary only sniper rifle from Mali Run that probably even outclasses the Firestorm in DPS. The Cracker Tower is no longer just known for one of the best red techs in the game, but also being one of the best sniper rifles as well and one of my new favorite weapons to take out the Graveyard and other bosses with. Unfortunately the volcanoes the weapon spawns after killing an enemy are still not great, but at least you got the damage from the weapon itself now. The last Mali 1 sniper rifle that received a damage buff but certainly not the least is the Storm, the shock counterpart of the Firestorm and similar to the Firestorm, the Storm is now 100% worth getting with one shot potential against almost any mob enemy and even some, well, decent boss killing potential or just to take out Votan's shield in the raid. Instead of fireballs, the storm launches four shock orbs into the air after every shot that will electrocute anything in a small radius around it, but just like the firestorm, your main source of damage will come from your projectiles, which still take a little longer to charge up on the storm. Still, all of these three Mali 1 sniper rifles are now absolutely amazing and fun to play with, so if you want to get them, you have to kill Katagawa Jr. in the Atlas HQ for the storm and the firestorm. And the Krakatoa has the highest chance to drop from the Rampager, or you could simply wait for them to drop from any other lootable source since they are all also a world drop. Moving on from long range weapon to weapons that are better used up close and one of those close range weapons is the 9V SMG which in my opinion has always been the weaker version compared to the AAA until now and even though I haven't tested the AAA for a while now and I don't think I've ever actually tested it on Mayhem Mode 4, 
I can definitely say that the 9V is now a pretty damn good SMG. It is great for any shielded or even armored enemies, works almost like a shotgun and has an insanely fast reload speed on top of the increased weapon damage it received. It shoots its pellet in a kind of V-shaped form and I must say I still like the A-shape of the AAA a little bit more but I can't be really mad seeing how much damage the weapon now deals. And as the name and shock elements suggest, this SMG will only drop from Killavolt in Lectra City and I suggest you should definitely give it a try. And now from an SMG that acts like a shotgun to a shotgun that is classified as an assault rifle, which is the sickle and if you choose to play with the sickle now and already played with it before, you will immediately notice the increased fire rate and increased damage the weapon received but also the weapon is a little bit hard to control with high recoil and a relatively small magazine size. Even though the sickle is now a lot more fun to use, I still don't see this weapon on par with anything in the meta game right now and I don't know if it's a shotgun that is suited for any playable character. The good thing about this shotgun is that it pulls ammo from your assault rifle reserves and therefore has a much larger ammo pool and even though I don't think the sickle pattern of the projectiles is all that useful, it is at least reliable. Although it is a world drop, you have the highest chance of getting it from Warden in the anvil on Eden 6. Up next we have two more buffed SMGs to go over and one of them is the TDO Smart Gun XXL that is a dedicated drop from Gigamine in the Meridian Metropolex and although Gearbox buffed the weapon damage it still has a very high ammo consumption, slow fire rate and slow moving projectiles that makes the normal use of this weapon pretty much unviable. Fortunately for any TDO fan, the damage of the thrown weapon upon reloading has also been increased so as expected it should be your main source of damage output when playing with it. Be careful about the blast radius though since it seems to be pretty big and it makes it easy to kill yourself sometimes. I personally was never a fan of TDO weapons in the Borderlands franchise but I think it's a good weapon for anyone who likes that playstyle now. I just wish the spider brains that spawn if you don't hit anything with your throw would be more than just a fun gimmick to look at. On the other hand though we have an SMG that now offers an even more unique playstyle and is perfectly suited for anyone that played classic Call of Duty, not because it refers to a real MP5 but because of the amount of jump shots with this weapon. The Kratos MP5 might actually receive the biggest damage buff out of any weapons in this hotfix. At least it's the only weapon where Gearbox decided to put the exact number in the patch notes with a whopping 80% critical hit damage while airborne. And as you can see, if you get used to the jump shooting, this SMG shreds everything now. Gearbox perfectly complemented the increased accuracy while airborne you receive with this weapon, which besides a high fire rate and increased movement speed was pretty much the only trait the weapon had to offer. There's not much more to say about it other than to go farm the Agonizer 9000 in the guts of Carnivora and work on your jumper. If only Mali 1 wouldn't have this stupid charge up time feature in Borderlands 3, the Hellshock would probably be my new favorite pistol in the entire game. It has a cool name and reference, I like the simple design of it, it always deals shock damage while you have the ability to deal incendiary damage after the projectile ricochets and it just melts your enemy on Mayhem 4. Like I said though, what's holding this weapon back for me at least is the lengthy charge up time it has which makes the gun sometimes not feel as good as it really is and the ricochet bullets ability is reminiscing of the Fibber in Borderlands 2 which is just a feature I don't really like using but honestly it's not really needed here since you never really need to switch to fire projectiles for more damage. I did test this out on Captain Tron however and it did a pretty good job taking him out for a pistol that was not commonly used before. If you don't want to wait for it to drop randomly from anywhere in the game, you can also farm Gigamind for the Hellshock and get a smart gun XXL while farming him as well.
The last weapon that received a buff brings back so much nostalgia since it was one of the earliest legendaries you could obtain in Borderlands 2. Dropping from Zane's brother himself after killing him on his ship in Southern Shelf. Now, seven and a half years later, Gearbox finally made this Mali 1 pistol useful and a worthy gun to have in your inventory again after being good in Borderlands 2. Even great sometimes back then for Gage, but I digress and. I think it was a little lackluster before this buff in Borderlands 3. Much like the Storm and Firestorm though, the weapon's special effect of an exploding shock orb that spawns at the point of impact from your projectile does deal just decent damage at best and you most likely have your enemy killed before the orbs hit the ground and explode anyway. That being said, it's absolutely amazing for just deleting your enemy's shields. Beyond that, it's not the greatest pistol to use, so it probably acts more as a support weapon in my opinion. It has a very high chance to drop from any of the power troopers in the Atlas HQ, so you might as well go get one and see for yourself. That's it for this week's hotfix and weapon buffs. I hope there will be a lot more of those over the next couple of weeks because I think there are still a lot of guns that desperately need a buff to be at least usable in higher difficulties. And of course, I really hope you enjoyed this video. I tried to keep this one as short as I could since there were a lot more buffed weapons to go over in this week. So a like would be very much appreciated. And if you really enjoyed this video, why not subscribe for more builds, weapon tests and amazing German accent and more Borderlands 3 content and with that being said, thanks for watching and I see you in my next one.